Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be explaining one of my uh, favorite little techniques while debugging buggy programs uh, called postmortem debugging. And the word postmortem comes from after death, so basically we're going to be debugging in failure scenarios after the problem has already happened. So let's jump into our example. Okay, so I'm going to make a small program. I guess it's going to take us a little bit to uh, write that out. Uh, but this program is going to be a very silly example, which just uh, sums a bunch of numbers together. Or averages a bunch of numbers. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, sure, we'll implement that in a second. If name equals main, exit main. Uh, for line in dot standard in. Let's see, print type done when done. just going to do a simple program where we uh, input some numbers and let's see numbers equals a list uh, if line let's see line equals line dot stripped because when you iterate over a file you'll get new lines on the end of the lines if line is equal to done then we will break otherwise numbers dot pens line I'm going to intentionally have a bug here this should be numbers.append like float line or int line or something like that, but let's uh, let's intentionally make this program buggy so that I'll have something to show you. And then our average function here can just be return sum numbers divided by len numbers. Just a nice little average function. Uh, we'll actually show two different bugs so that we can see this in a, a little bit more of an interesting way. So I've intentionally made a bug here, um, and if we run this program, so we do python3 t.py, uh, we type some numbers, so I can, whatever, some, some numbers, and then we type done. Uh, oh, we forgot to actually do the averaging part. <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, the average is average numbers. Try that again. Uh, three, two, one, some other bigger number, and then done. You'll see that we get a type error here. Uh, unsupported operand type for plus int and stir. And uh, I mean, if this program were anything more than this silly simple program, it might be pretty difficult to figure out what exactly these things were at that point in time and why we got this type error at this point. And that's where postmortem debugging comes in. Uh, we're going to actually look at three different ways to deal with postmortem debugging, and this will be the first one, which is the PDB module, um, but specifically running the PDB module. We'll see another technique that also uses, actually all three of them technically use the PDB module, but this is what I'll call running the PDB module. And so we'll pass dash m PDB to the Python executable, uh, and this will drop us into a debugger to start our program. And then when our program crashes, it'll give us a, uh, an interactive debugger. So when we press enter here, uh, pdb, <laughs> I'm not dyslexic, I swear. Um, so that'll drop us into a debugger before the program starts. So that's waiting at this import line here. And to start your program, you'll just do C for continue. And now the normal program is executing as before. And you know, we can type our numbers in here. Uh, oh, dang it. I <laughs> uh, should not, hold on, <laughs> bad example. I should not have typed a random string in here. I could have done, I guess I could have explained the problem with that as well. Oh my goodness, this is going poorly. <laughs> okay, continue. Then we type our numbers. There we go. And then we type done. And you'll see we got that crash from before that we were seeing. Uh, but the nice thing that it's done is it's dropped us into postmortem debugging and set us at our breakpoint here. So we can see, actually there's no breakpoint. It has created a breakpoint uh, where the crash happens. So we can inspect the numbers here and see, oh man, I'm a dummy. I didn't mean those to be strings. Those are supposed to be floats. And so then I would go here and convert uh, the line from a string into a float and we could run our program again. And when we run it this time, uh, we don't want ASDF. 
uh, and then we type done, you can see that the program works as expected. Now there's actually a second bug here, um, and that's what happens if we just press done here, we get a zero division error. Now, of course, in this, you could just infer that len numbers is zero, and so, you know, you wouldn't have to do any debugging for this, but you could also use PDB to end up in the same state. So again, continue at the beginning of the program, and then done, and we see that we get our zero division error here, and we can see that numbers is an empty list, and of course, zero divided by zero is an error. And so we could write a case for this and say like, if not numbers, uh, no numbers were entered. Uh, I don't know, otherwise do this here. So now that we've fixed our program, we can quit that with Q and run it normally. And you'll see if we just type done now, it says no numbers were entered. So we've we fixed the two bugs in our program using postmortem debugging. Woo! Uh, so let me let me show you another common pattern that happens in command line applications, and another way that you might apply postmortem debugging. So um, some some applications do uh, top level error handling such that they don't produce stack traces to users, which uh, when you're running a program, you kind of expect it to never produce a stack trace. Like stack traces are mostly for the programmer and not for uh, an end user. And so generally people will do something like this, where they'll, you know, wrap their real main uh, in a try except like this, return real main, uh, except exception, and they'll just catch all exceptions in the world. Uh, well, <laughs> all exceptions that are not you know, keyword interrupt and system exit, which there's a video on that if you want to check that one out. Uh, it's earlier in the playlist. And they'll, they'll catch all exceptions, and when the exception occurs, they will print an error message. So, you know, uh, print unexpected error occurred. E. And, you know, they'll return some error case here. And when, when you have a construct like this, it's often difficult to use P, the MPDB to debug this. So let's actually reintroduce our bug. Uh, so we'll, we'll reintroduce the, the division by zero error. And so we run this now and we just type done. You'll see, oops, we forgot an F. <laughs> uh, actually do type E dot name and then the value there. So you'll see uh, unexpected error occurred, zero division error, division by zero, but we don't get a stack trace here. And actually when we use the debugger here, uh, dash M PDB, and we continue and we type done to trigger that error. Uh, <laughs> you can ignore this. This, uh, this value error IO operation on closed file, I think this is a bug in PDB where if a program exits normally, it uh, crashes the debugger, which uh, is, is great. <laughs> but you'll notice that um, the program exited normally here. We didn't actually have any um, any way to inspect this zero division error. And that's because it was caught here and it was handled by the program. Uh, the, it didn't, the, the stack trace didn't crash the entire program. And we can actually do some debugging by changing the, some code here to uh, do postmortem debugging on this. And the way you do that is you import PDB and then do pdb.postmortem. And you do this in the most, like the furthest outer stack trace, and, or sorry, furthest outer accept block. Uh, and if you don't have an accept block, you can always like, uh, like if you knew it was somewhere around this code here, you could put try accept import pdb pdb.postmortem. And this will jump to whatever line caused the crash. But in our case, we already have an accept block, so we don't need to do that. Uh, we can just do that here. And now if we run this again, and C to start, and then done, you'll see that we have dropped into this, uh, this error case here. And then we can, you know, inspect that numbers is empty, and of course, sum of zero divided by len of zero is zero division, like we saw before. Um, so that's the second way of doing postmortem debugging. 
And the third way uh, is using a test runner. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using PyTest. And uh, we're going to make an intentionally failing test. So from t import average, uh, test average of numbers on screen. You can still see it. So average equals average of, I don't know, one, two, and three. And maybe I made a mistake in the test and said assert avg is equal to three, which it isn't. And we need to actually install PyTest. That real quick, PyTest test.py. You know, see we have a failing test here. And PyTest actually gives us enough information to know, uh, you know, what the problem is here. But maybe the test was more complicated or you were dealing with a case that's, you know, not so straightforward. Uh, and you can pass the dash dash PDB option to PyTest. And now when the test fails, it drops you into a debugger. And so you can poke around here and see like, you know, what was this average function? Like, what did we actually get? Oh, okay, it was supposed to be 2.0, not three, of course. My test is buggy, so I should change that there. But yeah, that's the dash dash PDB option to PyTest, and that's another way that you can do postmortem debugging. Um, in another test runner that I was working with before I worked with PyTest, there was also a PDB option. Uh, there was actually an IPDB option for the uh, IPython-based terminal debugger. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Postmortem debugging really changed how I approach a lot of problems in Python, so hopefully it can you know, help you out as well. But thank you all for watching. If you have additional stuff you want me to talk about, leave a comment, hit me up on Twitter, join my Twitch stream, etc. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.